Hello and welcome to this next tutorial on how to use NVIDIA's Flex within Unreal Engine 4. Today I'll be talking about uh, containers and what they're good for within uh, when you're using Flex. So, um, as I mentioned in one of my earlier videos, uh, a container is a set of sections... Uh, <laughs> sorry, um, is a, a section of settings um, that controls how the particles within the Flex simulation behaves. And you need to apply um, a, a container to any flex assets for them to uh, behave uh, in any way. So in this scene we have uh, some cloth and we have uh, some fluids and we have some rigid bodies right here. So um, if we try and look at uh, these boxes you can see that the uh, container is uh, flex mixed and this means that um, whenever you have a, a flex object that co that has this container applied it will uh, uh, collide with uh, or interact with all the other uh, flex objects in your scene that has the same container applied so this is a very important thing to remember um, that if you want these particles right here to interact with these boxes they need to have the same container applied if we try and select these boxes right here and add let's say um, the rigid container and we simulate you see these particles does not in any way collide or interact with our, our boxes right here so if we go back our boxes and choose the mixed container that we had before you can now see that they interact so how do you cre create a container well you right click anywhere uh, in your uh, content browser and then under um, let's see miscellaneous there should be a no it must be on it's under physics so how do you create a container well you right click anywhere in your content browser and go to physics and see there are several uh, assets that you can create that um, has something to do with flex so flex container is what we're looking for today and flex fluid surface is what you need if you want the fluid to have a surface um, just like the particles we see on the uh, in this emitter here right here as you can see they uh, these particles are represented as spheres but this has uh, these particle has a surface Um, and then when you have a, a container you can open it up and see all these settings and I'll try to go through the most important ones so the first setting is the size of the particles and if we try and change that to something like 5 you can see that uh, the particles are really much smaller and you get a different behavior where they are much closer to each other Let's set it back to 20. And if you if you, if you choose one of the uh, containers that are already pre-configured that came with a flex test package, um, you can go and look at their settings and try and emulate or copy to get the behavior that you want. So max particles is self-explanatory. It's the amount of particles you can have in the scene, and if we try and play this emitter setup so that the particles will die uh, at some point but when if we we set the time uh, if we don't set them to die after a certain amount of time the emitter will just stop because it has reached reached this maximum number of particles 
that you can have a scene at a, in a scene at one time. So if if you're suddenly um, if if you can't figure out why your emitter won't work or why it's suddenly stopped, it's probably because you have the maximum number of uh, particles in a scene already. Or within this container, you can have several containers uh, in the scene at once. So these particles, this ball right here, and these boxes and the cloth are all within the same container, while this emitter right here has a different container, which um, has some different settings because we want some surface on these flu uh, on these particles. Um, number of iterations. If for some reason your particles are behaving strangely or uh, or are flying all over the place, you can try and uh, and change the number of iterations and number of sub steps um, to. But there will also be a a cost to changing these because it will be a lot more expensive the more iterations you need to go through for each particle. Uh, re recommend that you set minimum freight rate at 60 and keep this fixed time step. Now one of the fun things here is you can also change the gravity. So if we were to say let's have half the gravity let's say 490 You can see that the behavior changes quite a bit, and if we go and let's let's just play around with this, and let's say it's positive uh, eighty nine one eight hundred ninety, you'll see the particles going up because we have effectively reversed. Um, gravity. So you can play around with this if you want your particles to behave in a certain way, if you have anti-gravity uh, or whatnot. Um, sleep threshold. If you if you want your particles to to uh, rest uh, when they are below a certain velocity, um, you can set it right here. So if we change this to a thousand. You can see the particles here does not move as they try to rest as much as possible. So max velocity um, is the speed of your particles. So if you want your particles to freeze for some reason, for example, if you if um, you have a, a game where you play with time, you can have your particles move really slow, and if you set the max velocity to zero. They will try and stay in place. Of course the other particles will push push them out of the way. Let's set that back to a thousand. And the container bound just leave it because it means how if you want to constrain um, the boundaries of your container you can do that here but Usually you just want your particles to be able to work uh, in the entire level. You can also have a dampening factor. If you think your particles are all over the place, you can try and damp them. We can set this to 1. And you can see that we have da actually damped these particles. They're not flying so much more uh, all over the place. Collision. You can check this to have um, your particles uh, interact with complex collision. If you have something like this right here, you can have it interact with a um, complex collision. You can specify which, which object type your um, flex object should be considered as. I'm just, I would just leave it at flex and then you can control which um, of your other assets should, not, or should or should not collide with your flex objects. And you can even set uh, how the flex uh, particles or objects should collide with other um, assets in your world, depending on re your response channels. So you could, if you would like, you could have the pawn not to uh, be interacting with your flex particles. Then collision distance. Um, this means how close to uh, other objects do the particles get and if you have uh, something like a box as we have here uh, if you set the collision distance it will try to it, if it's too high 
you can see the boxes here like float over the uh, the static mesh that is because uh, it's trying to maintain um, a distance of 100 units so you can set this higher or lower depending on whether you want your uh, collision objects to be closer to your uh, static meshes um, then you can change friction and this is friction against uh, other shapes it's um, statics meshes or um, pawns and whatnot in your scene so if we set the friction to some high number you can see that they don't fall down the stairs as, as quickly as they did before because there's friction set that back and then you can have um, particle friction meaning so how how much friction do you want between the different flex particles and remember these boxes are also uh, consisting of flex particles so if we set that really high um, let's set it a little higher So if you see how they behave against this uh, ball right here, it's um, the friction is rather high. It was 0.3. Adhesion. How much uh, do you want your particles to stick uh, to a surface? This could um, be interesting if if you have some goo or. Uh, other some glue or something else that you want to stick to the surface so if we set that really high you can see they try to they are all over the place trying to adhere to the to these uh, surfaces so one is uh, really high if you just set it to 0 0.1 so you can see these boxes cl try to stick to to the stairs and the particles are also sticking to um, the geometry. Now we get to this section which is about cloth in general or the this this collision section is uh, is uh, for all particles in general so everything will that has this container on will um, behave in the way that you specified in this section but this section here is for cloth um, alone and if we we have a wind um, setting so we can have the cloth wave like it's in the wind or behave like if there was wind and we set that to a hundred and you can see that the cloth is uh, acting as something was blowing on it in a later video I'll try to explain how to use um, some of the other uh, um, physics collision things in Unreal Engine 4 or, or let's see if I can find this um, yeah radial force sorry so you can use radial force to interact with uh, flex particles as well uh, like an explosion or if you want wind to to be uh, act on this as well and then uh, in the fluid section, you have to uh, click this if you need fluid within your container. So if I uncheck this, um, it won't behave as a fluid. you can't change any of the settings anyway um, so rest distance is how much how long or how much distance do you want between the particles cohesion is uh, how much are the particles going to stick together so if we change that to 0 0.5 you can see that the particles are clumping together so if you have some really sticky goo you can use this and then use adhesion to have it um, stick to the walls as well. Let's change that back to um, 
viscosity is also interesting. It means um, if we change that down to a zero. It's um, it's how much of a liquid is it? It's I haven't seen s the changes that big. Uh, depending on what you set it, if you set it to like twenty, it'll try and behave more um, like a fluid that is thicker or thinner. That's the best description I can give you. I'll just I usually just leave it at five. Um, and these settings down here is uh, settings you use when you have um, a particles like these where you have a surface on them. And if we try and compare, you can see that um, the anisotropic, anisotropic scale um, is set on this one, it means that we have to calculate uh, the surface of the particles or the fluid. And we set this max to about five and then uh, smoothing on them as well to have um, the fluid behave um, like this. All right, I think this was how a uh, brief introduction to um, the containers that control how your particles uh, in the scene behave and I would definitely suggest playing around with them. In the next video I'll show how to change some of these settings uh, in-game if you for example want to be able to change um, the gravity um, as you can see if I hold down G sorry that's so if I hold down G the gravity changes and when I release it, it goes back to normal. And we can freeze the flex, meaning that the speed of the particles is set to zero. Um, and we can raise cohesion as well, meaning that they will clump together. Now, in the next video,